Hi everyone, this is Hibba from My Little Journal and today I'm going to be sharing with you a fun little tutorial and I guess a tips and tricks kind of uh, video. I've been asked a lot to share how I stamp on my photos, vellum, my paper, all that good stuff and I get a lot of those comments where I'm told your stamping is so crisp and beautiful, but mine is always smudging and it's not as crisp. So I wanted to share with you these little tips and tricks and I'm gonna start by talking about the inks that I use and the inks that I prefer. Now there's so many different ink pads out there, but these are the inks that work for me and I wanted to share that with you. You can either go with it and grab some of these inks for yourself or you can use the inks that work for you, but take these tips and tricks and make them work on your projects. So let's start. I'm going to start with my favorites. My archival ink is definitely my favorite. This is the Jet Black. This is, these are all my opinions. I'm not dissing any companies and I'm not saying that I know it all because I don't. But these are what work um, on my projects and that have been working for me for years. I love the archival ink. It is a pigment permanent ink and it just works on my projects. I always feel like I get a crisp um, stamp and I feel like I can stamp it on anything and it's gonna work. I love to use this, especially when stamping on photos. I will share with you how I stamp all my photos, especially using uh, the Canon selfie paper. Now, pigment ink is slow drying, but it's there's a way around it and I will share that with you but I what I love about this stuff is it doesn't soak into your paper and that's why it doesn't dry as fast so usually you'll have a little bit of ghosting but you won't have that look soaking into the paper if that makes sense and that's one of the reasons I love the archival and I also love my little mini archivals these guys are just the perfect size they fit into these tins that you can purchase separately. And I love that they're small enough to store on my desk. Now, my craft room is really, really small. And if you haven't seen my craft room tour, I will link it up at the eye for you. But my craft room is really small and I store most of my stuff on my desk, especially my inks because I'm always stamping on every single project. So having these in a little tin and having all the colors right next to me is just perfect for me. So I always enjoy the smaller sized inks. Moving on to our dye inks. Now I have a few favorites. Uh, with the brands and all that good stuff. I love the Color Theory Studio Calico inks. First, because of the size, it's pretty small compared to the archival. You can see that. And as I said earlier, size matters for me. I need it to be smaller so I can have them stored on my desk. And like in arm's reach where I'm working on a project, I don't have to go looking for my inks. They're right in front of me. Also, you have a huge selection of colors on their website so you can get your three shades of green, your two shades of blue, all that good stuff. That is something really important to me and especially that I use a lot of the buildable stamps. So having a selection and having like different shades of one color is really important for me. I also use the Clearly Kelly, the mini ink pads. These guys are beautiful. The colors they come in are just gorgeous. I love these colors. I love these pads. Some of these are actually hybrid. These are hybrid inks right here, and this is like a dye ink. But um, I love them both. I use them. I even, you can see I have them in the same tin. I don't like separate them or anything like that. I just really love using mini ink pads, and the smaller they are, the better for me. Now the hybrid inks, or the dye inks, sorry, the dye inks dry faster, but they soak into your paper uh, big time. So if you're not using a good cardstock, I don't recommend you use like um, just uh, like printer paper. It's going to soak through your paper and probably soak right on your desk. So definitely I don't use these in my planner or anything like this. I only use my archival in my planner. It does give ghosting, but it does not s soak in like the dye inks. But um, the good thing about the dye inks is they dry faster and also 
they are very smooth. So when you stamp it, it gives this really smooth look. I find that I have to double stamp when I'm using dye inks. Um, I guess that doesn't bother a lot of people, but of course, if you're using a, a stamp platform, which we will talk about later, um, these are perfect because you can double stamp them and you're good to go. I feel like the archivals, you stamp them the first time and you always get a nice crispy image, even though it sits on your like paper and doesn't soak in. But as I said earlier, that doesn't bother me and I'm gonna share how you can speed up the process with the archival inks. We're moving on to Brilliance Ink. I love the Brilliance Ink. This is the Moonlight White. This is one of my favorites. I use this to stamp on photos, on vellum, all good stuff. I even use it to um, heat emboss because it's very slow drying and I feel like it works on paper perfectly, or not paper, sorry, pictures perfectly. So this is my go-to when I want some white ink. I feel like it's really pretty, it's true to color. So those are the inks that I use. Um, I don't have a huge collection of ink pads. I know I love to stamp on my uh, projects, but I'm a huge fan of the black archival and most of the time I use my black ink. Um, only like rare moments when I'm working on a project that I use different colors, but my go-to is definitely black, the Jet Black archival. And I'm going to be sharing with you all the different ways that I use my ink pads to create some really fun stamping on my projects. Now let's talk about the stamp locks and the stamp platforms and all that good stuff Things that I use to help me stamp. I love stamp locks. I have a huge collection. Actually, this is not all of it, but I'm going to grab a few for you. I like to buy my stamp locks in sets because when you buy them in sets, you get different sizes, like this is a set right here, and it's a set of four. You get this really long one, you get some squares, different sizes, love this mini one. This is my favorite, especially for those little small stamps. And what I like about the smaller ones is when you're stamping the small stamps and you use a large stamp block, you'll get ink all over your stamp block, so when you stamp it, it will get on your project. But the smaller ones, you won't be able to do that because the ink will not get on your little stamp block. And once you stamp your little mini stamp, it's going to be perfect and you're not going to get ink on your project. I will add the links for the set. I've been asked a lot about my set because I use this little mini one a lot. So I will add the links for that. I also love my Tim Holtz platform. This guy is my baby. Love this thing, especially when you want to stamp like a large title, you're stamping things that you have a feeling won't, like those bigger um, solid stamps, you know that it's not gonna stamp out perfectly the first time around. So using your stamp platform, you can always double stamp and you won't have a problem with uh, kind of making sure that everybody, everything is set properly when you're doing your second stamping. Also, you can use rubber stamps on this. I'm not a big fan of rubber stamps. I don't use them a lot. But if you do use rubber stamps, this is perfect because you can just rele remove this, flip it over, and it, you see right here it says clear, and then over here it says rubber. So now once you flip it, you're using the rubber stamp. If you flip it back, you're using the clear stamps. So I love that. I love that option. Um, so this is one of my favorites. Love to use this when I'm creating large titles. Your titles always come out on a straight line because you have these little um, grids that help you line up your stamps. You can double stamp if one of your stamps doesn't stamp out perfectly. This is one of um, my go-to things, especially when I'm stamping a lot. So those are the things I use to stamp on my photos and my projects. And let's move on to the actual tips and tricks and how I stamp on my pictures and vellum and paper and all that good stuff. Okay, you guys, let's start with the basics and I'm going to be sharing with you why I love the archival ink and how I use it to stamp on these slick surfaces and why I feel like it works for me. So we're gonna start with uh, selfie paper. This, I printed it out on selfie paper, the Canon selfie, and selfie paper is glossy and very, very slick. So when you're stamping, you will sometimes find that your hand moves 
or it will smudge. And I want to show you how I do that without smudging my stamping. Let's grab one of my favorites. This is the Kelly Perky Wild Stamp Set. Now let's get something. Let's, let's use this stamp. It's kind of big and it has some bold letters. So you can see that, okay? Now I wanna stamp this right here. And now to stamp this on my paper, I'm gonna use my black archival ink. And when I'm stamping, I will not move or press down or anything like that on my paper or on my photo. Now the reason for that is, as I said, it's slick surface. You don't want to move your hand when stamping on your photos. So I'm going to make sure that my stamp is nice and covered with my black archival. I will check it. And I feel like it's good to go. So I'm going to go ahead. You can, when you watch me do this um, on my videos, I always try to hold both um, sides of my stamp block. And I'm literally just going down I'm not pressing, I just let it touch my picture. I will not like shift it back and forth or anything. I just press tiny bit. I'm not even like pressing hard. Lift it up a tiny bit and there you go. You have a nice crisp image of your stamp using the archival ink. If you move your ink back and forth, it will smudge and if you like um, do it just with one hand. Now I do it with one hand sometimes. I've gotten used to it. I've, it's been um, years of practice, so I don't have a problem with that. I have a lot of control. But if you don't have a lot of control over your hands, use both hands, hold your stamp block, stamp it down, literally, and lift it up. So don't move it around. I always say stamp down, lift up, stamp down, lift up. Don't twirl, don't push, don't move it because you will get that smudgy look. Now that we got that done, I'm gonna clean off my stamp. By the way, I use this Lawn Fawn stamp uh, cleaner. Mine is really dirty. By the way, this is after cleaning it. But this thing works perfectly to clean your stamps. You don't get all the lint and stuff from wet wipes. And all you have to do is just soak it in water and then you just come to your stamp, wipe it off, and you're good to go. So I like to use the Lawn Fawn. Now let's talk about this not being dry. It is not dry. And actually I can even see that it's still very, very shiny. And if I touch that, I'm gonna ruin it. So what I like to do, I know on my videos you see me lay it on my Project Life page protector and I don't slide them in because I know they're not dry. And if I slide them in, I ruined the whole thing. So what I like to do is I leave them to air dry. I don't slide them into my pockets until days later when I remember about them or I'm working my project life and I need to use the page protectors, I'll slide them in and at that time they are dry. If you are not patient, which sometimes I need to slide them into the page protectors. Now I like to use a heat gun to dry my stamping on my pictures. Your selfie paper can handle water and heat. So definitely this, I just draw my picture, this will work. I don't recommend that you hold it too close. I hold it about like this far away and I dry it and it dries up really, really quickly. Uh, I'm gonna speed this up and show you how fast this will dry with a heat gun and then I'll show you how nice and dry it will be on your picture. So this should be dry. I'm gonna check. It is totally dry. See that? It's not gonna smudge. It's done. So you can use your heat gun. Nothing happened to my picture. It doesn't even warp. So I definitely recommend to use your heat gun if you are in a hurry and you just don't want it. wait for it to dry. Now these are the tricks uh, that we have to do if you're using selfie paper. So those extra st steps are okay with me. I know there's a lot of matte. I use the 
for my 4x8s, I get them printed at Persnickety Prints. And this is matte paper, so when I stamp on these guys, I don't have a problem. They take seconds to dry, and I don't have to worry about it, so I don't have to do what I did for my selfie paper. So this is just literally what you got to do when you're using selfie paper. I'm going to share with you another little stamp here. Let's use our archival again. Now, basically, I only use my archival and my Brilliance ink to stamp on photos. I don't use other colors. That's just me. I believe you can stamp the archival colored ones on your photos, and it will work as well as the black. I love the black, so I use the black. Let's use this guy. I want something large and bold for this large photo. So I'm going to use my little wild stamp set and I'm going to go ahead and ink this up. You could of course use your stamp platform for this. It would make it much easier because if it doesn't work out the first time around you can double stamp it easily with the platform. I'm just going literally straight down not putting a lot of pressure. I'm not like don't kind of rock your stamp plat your stamp lock just straight down. I push a tiny bit. I got used to this. I know my hand is not going to move, but if you feel like you don't have steady hands, don't push down. And then lift it right up and it will stamp so beautifully like that. Love it. Clean down my stamps. If you want to take care of your stamps, you need to clean them after you use it because it will it will sit on your stamp for a while and it just will ruin your stamps after a while. So definitely recommend to clean it afterwards. And I really love how easy and simple using the archival to stamp on photos. So my recommendation is you have your stamp, you go straight down and you lift it straight up. No rocking, no shifting, no moving, no heavy duty like kind of stamping down on your stamp because it will smudge. Let's take this one and stamp with some white Brilliance ink. Um, let's look here. Let's do Wilderness Girl because it's a picture of my daughter in the water. Okay, so because I've stamped this a few times in um, different colors, it's pretty dark and black, I'm just going to go over it with my little chamois to make sure that it's clean and I'm not gonna kind of contaminate my picture. Literally with the Brilliance ink, it's different than the archival. The archival ink is harder, like this is not as like um, spongy, that's the word I'm looking for. This one is spongy, so you are not pushing too hard on the ink pad. I'm literally tapping. I'm not pushing down too much because you don't want too much ink on your stamp. I'm just going back and forth. I have a feeling that it looks good and my stamp is covered. And I'm going to go straight down like we did earlier. Straight down. Don't shift your hand, especially with the white Brilliance ink because it will smudge. I'm going to move one hand. I push down a tiny, tiny bit where my stamp is not moving. I just use my pointer finger and then I lift up. I don't know if you can see that, but look at that. Crisp, beautiful, no problem at all, no smudges, nothing. And as I said earlier, to get that, you have to be very steady, especially on selfie paper, glossy, um, photo paper, any paper that is slick. So that's using the Brilliance. Again, this is not dry. I'm going to have to use my heat gun or let it air dry for a couple of hours. So you can definitely use your heat gun to speed the process for this. Um, anyways, those are my tips and tricks on stamping on photos. I hope that was helpful. And it, the same goes to vellum. Now, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but I'm going to Grab some paper so we can see this. So stamping on vellum is literally the same, same thing. 
let's grab actually a different color ink. Some of these mini archivals that I really love. Let's take the purple because it's darker and we can see that on camera. Let's grab a small stamp here. Let's do the fresh air. So I'm going to stamp fresh air. I'm just tapping down on my ink pad. Make sure that I get a good coverage. It is it looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp on my vellum. I'm doing the same thing. I'm keeping my hands steady. I'm stamping down. I'm not shifting. I'm not doing anything with my stamp lock. I'm keeping it straight down. Lift. I don't know if you can see that. Perfect. But let's move on to just regular paper. This is printer paper. Actually, this is my 35 pound paper and this is my Nina White cardstock, which is the good stuff, you guys. Now, let's try the hybrid, which I love to use, not on my photos, that's for sure, or on vellum. It just doesn't work for me on those two surfaces, but we're gonna do the dye ink and the hybrid ink. Well, this one's darker, let's do two shades. Hybrid ink will stamp nicely. When I stamp on regular paper, um, I just go for it. I push, I don't like move my stamp block, but I do push down. I'm going to show you how it, you have ghosting, but it doesn't seep in that bad like dye inks. Let's try it on the Nina White. This is thicker cardstock, and usually you get really good impressions using better paper. So you can see here that it looks kind of blotchy, and it doesn't fill in, you know, like a crisp stamp. But that will just kind of smooth out and you'll get a better impression once you wait a little bit. And the same goes for the dyes, the dye inks. I need to clean my stamp before I do that. Okay, let's try this guy. So you see how blotchy that is? But if we wait a little bit, it will look so much better. And this definitely soaks in big time. Now, not on the Nina White. You can still see ghosting, actually, on the Nina White. But it won't seep in because this is heavier cardstock or paper. And this guy, because it's only like 35-pound paper, I'm going to show you how it seeps in. It, goes, it soaks right into the paper. I don't know if you can see that. So those are the die and the hybrid, and you got to see me stamping it. I didn't really like focus on making it perfect because if you just stamp down, don't rock your stamp lock, you're good to go. Using some archival. Now this is where I always say I love my archival ink because I get a good impression every single time. And you'll see right now, Look at that. So pretty, so crisp. You can see this one got better. It smoothed out a little bit. This one's still working on it, but your archival definitely stamps really nice and crisp. And even using it on the lesser, thicker paper. Really good impression. You can see that. And, oh, you can see here the difference of this one just, it's ghosting. And these are like, they sunk into the paper. So it just depends on what you're using them on right there too. You can barely see the archival one. And love my archivals, especially the black and my minis. Let me move this out of the way. I'm all over the place when I do tutorials. Um, love my minis. You have a big selection of colors. I have another 10 full of colors. 
and my black archival for stamping on photos. Love how it looks when you stamp on photos. Look at that black ink. It is just beautiful, very easy. You can use your heat gun to dry them faster. So these are my go-tos. I use them all the time. If you've been watching me for a while, you know that. I also love my White Brilliance ink, and it always stamps so nicely on my photos. This is the perfect white ink if you're stamping on photos or dark surfaces. But those are my tips and tricks. If you have any questions, I really hope this tutorial was helpful. I'm really bad at doing tutorials for some reason, but I hope you guys enjoyed watching this tutorial and I hope I was able to help you and answer your questions. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below and I'll try my best to answer every single one of them. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and if you did, please give me a thumbs up and if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing and I hope to see you guys very soon. Bye!